Hello everyone. I want to speak to this upcoming Jupiter-Venus conjunction. And if you haven't had a chance yet, check it out in the night sky. It's absolutely brilliant. Two bright luminaries coming together. It's really beautiful. This happens every year, right? So it, it's not a very uncommon transit, but I want to really tune into its meaning and its significance. Whenever we deal with Jupiter, we look at the possibility of exaggeration, right? So it, it, it's easy with this to say, oh, the, you know, this is like when everything is going to work out in my relationship, or I'm going to find the right person to make a big deal out of things. And what I want to offer as a starting point, Jupiter in its essence is about authenticity. Okay? So there's a quality of expansiveness where the road before us feels open and free and promising because we're being authentic. The quality of authenticity, which we can also say is sincerity, honesty, being truthful about what is really means we're not trying to fabricate our own experience. We're not trying to convince ourselves or others of something that isn't. We're not trying to push ourselves to create some kind of meaning and purpose that we think should be. So the honesty of Jupiter, it, it isn't always easy, right? It isn't always like, um, at first, a joyful or expansive experience because we actually, in a sense, need to humble, need to slow down, and just face things as they are. And there can be a sort of letdown or disappointment or sort of the sobering honesty of, oh yeah, this is what is, or I'm not where I wanted to be, or things aren't the way I wanted them to be. Sort of the experience of, I heard this story once from Adyashanti about a friend of his who um, got uh, put in jail for, I think, drunk driving. And when he was in jail, he had a sobering moment of realizing, oh, I'm an alcoholic. Right? Until then, there are all kinds of uh, rationale and intellectual mechanisms created to somehow not admit this to himself. But the moment there's that admitting, it, it's like the path really opens up then. We've met the reality of things as they are. You know, and Jupiter and Aries, and I've spoken a lot about Jupiter and Aries, really does carry this quality of be honest, be courageous, be willing to be really where you are. But the, the pieces to be aware of is the defensiveness or the, the exaggerating the importance of things or trying to push forward with some sort of heroic sense of purpose or destiny. The expansiveness and the magnetic quality of our path and what draws us, it really opens up when we're just willing to look at ourselves honestly and authentically right now. We bring this together with Venus, both of them happening in Aries. Of course, this is going to speak to not just our external relationships, but our own sense of value. Venus is self-esteem, self-worth. What makes my life feel beautiful and livable and meaningful, right? We all have a way that we naturally want to feel and should feel really as an extension or an expression of feeling in alignment with our unique being, right? The physical reality of our human incarnation, the biology of it, the food we eat, how we feel, there's a quality of Venusian balance that says I'm in balance with myself. This is right for me. These are my values specific to my incarnation. So Jupiter Venus can be the sense of, on the one hand, a, a growing optimism and expansion of, yes, this is what I need. These are, you know, for me, I've been really getting into some specific health practices and research and I can really feel that Venus Jupiter of, oh, you know, I, this is it. This is the thing that I really need right now. And I, it's not an, a, an, an eternal answer, but right now I can feel, Venus is feeling um, a sense of rightness to it. And it's a beautiful experience to know our path and to be able to walk it and to embrace it because especially with Aries, we're making choices. We're saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try this. And it will coincide with a sense of, hmm, this is new. I have no evidence that tells me uh, that I should do it or shouldn't do it. I have no one to compare to in my world. Right? Other people may not share the same values or perspective or beliefs or understanding or have the same needs, but this is right for me. Okay? So that expansiveness and that feeling of um, growing more deeply into a state of self-love and self-acceptance and self-care and self-appreciation can really open up here. But the opposite is also true. I really want to give some attention to this. There can be an exaggerated quality of defensiveness, um, stuckness, entrapment, and fear 
with this combination. Now, Jupiter will blow things up. The purpose of the, the blowing things up is not to actually make real that there's some sort of big, huge issue, but to really reveal back to us our state of mind. Jupiter is inherently optimistic because life is inherently so. Meaning every experience, the nature of this evolutionary journey, even when it's hard, fundamentally at its highest or most compassionate or a more compassionate way of thinking is serving our ongoing soul growth. And there's always a way of thinking and seeing things, but in an honest way, that makes us more available to learn, to heal, to grow, to open up, to give, right? To, to become more aligned with the truth of what we are. So there is a, a natural optimistic quality to Jupiter in life. And yet the, the pessimism or the feeling of um, I'm being attacked or all of these people or things or experiences or my body or my life path, it's just, it's just it's so bad. It's, it's so hard. I'm really stuck. I don't want to be where I want to be. Or these people, you know, I, I got to see them as an enemy. I got to create some kind of war. Or I got to be sort of very strong in this perspective that this is bad for me. And we really want to be mindful of that. Because while there is a truth to making changes and making choices and saying, I'm going to go this way or I'm going to do this thing, when it comes, when it coincides, when it's sort of justified with a sense of seeing anything on the outside as wrong or as a hindrance, what we're actually crystallizing is a, a consciousness that says, my freedom, my joy, my value is established by way of giving attention to, acknowledging, denying, pointing out, and believing in that which is not good for me. The truth never needs to give attention to what's not true. The truth and the forward movement of our soul journey it is never grounded and crystallized in a healthy way by way of justifying it with beliefs and perceptions that perceive us to be limited by the outer world. It's not a more holistic way of thinking. But we can really feel that. We can, right? So that quality of defensiveness that wants to push away or reject or become sort of self-righteous. I need this. This is what I need, right? It looks like we might be, um, you know, doing the strong Aries thing of asserting ourselves. But really what we're doing, and take a moment to find the right word, we're trying to win a war, right? We're actually believing that this life is a battle. We're believing that life is a battle to fight and that there are people and places and things that are going to get in the way. As opposed to everything being an invitation to become more self-aware. It's like, oh, what is this defensiveness? What is this fear? What is this anger? And really, what is it pointing to within me that wants more loving care and attention, right? We can trick ourselves. We can't actually be rejecting and pushing away and hating the outer world and loving ourselves at the same time. We might think we are. And I spoke a lot about this in the last video uh, on Pluto. It's a very common Pluto thing where we can just be so bound by these strong psychological perceptions, um, strong likes and dislikes and resentments. You know, and the, the Pluto archetype and the Aries archetype are very similar in evolutionary astrology. We understand that Aries and Mars, that archetype is a lower octave of Pluto, right? So where we're making choices, we're instigated by life experience to respond. And so we're going to feel like, ooh, I want that, or ooh, I don't want that. But the greater question is, what's my purpose, right? What do I value most? What do I, what's my goal, right? Our goal and what we really want most will determine the kinds of choices that we make, which will point back to the kinds of perceptions we're willing to accept as the basis for our choices. So there is a promise of expansion and growth, but be mindful of where we want to gravitate towards uh, concrete answers that further a greater sense of separation. As I said in the beginning, authenticity is the key. Authenticity is the most important thing with Jupiter. And referencing our own values, our own feeling body, the inherent value and worth of our own being is essential with Venus because that really enables us as well to honor and respect the value and the being of everyone else. 
we think incorrectly that if we give more, we're going to lose. Because our association with giving, and this is a very common Libra, uh, Venus thing through the archetype of Libra, the Aries polarity, is giving something of ourself. We're losing, compromising our values. Um, is instead of you know, feeding, we're giving our whole arm. And so we often associate life as a, a push-pull or a, a dynamic confrontation between us and other people and we try to find ha- balance and harmony so you know venus and aries can come along and be like i'm not going to give i'm going to just focus on myself and a lot of spirituality says focus on yourself right be selfish um commonly that's what i see a lot of this important emphasis on honor yourself but it can often go in this direction of honor yourself by denying and pushing away others and you know putting your foot down all of those kinds of things So I want to reframe the Venusian idea of giving as extending. Because when you extend, you're not losing anything. It's a helpful way to reframe the idea of giving. When you extend your arm, you're extending it. You're not losing your arm. Um, When you extend love, it's, it's still there in you. It's being shared. Extension is implicit to having something that can't be taken. It's just being extended outwards. It's very easy to think of giving as a losing, right? So the best analogy for giving in this regard is the extension of a flame to another candle. You've maybe all heard this analogy. It doesn't lose any of its brightness. In fact, in the moment of sharing its flame with another candle, it temporarily grows, right? It's illuminated. Its greater potential is illuminated and it doesn't lose any of its fire. So we want to be thinking in terms of Jupiter or Venus. I want to come into alignment with my truth, with a way of living and loving and knowing myself and appreciating my life, but only results in more expansiveness, openness, freedom, and generosity and the extension of my greater gifts, the extension of the greater value and beauty and meaning of my life. So as we hold that as an orientation, we can also be willing to walk on the edge of the unknown. That can feel scary. Mm. moving in that way often means um, not having these concrete answers. And this is an important thing for Jupiter that we are often afraid to really embrace. There isn't a lot of certainty with Jupiter. Um, There isn't a lot of, and this is how it goes, and this is what it is, and this is what we'll look like. It's more of the quality of you step out of your house, you go on a long pilgrimage, and you're you're present for it. You You are aware of it happening, you don't know all the contours, right? And you just know it's designed for your best. And there are challenges that come up on the journey. But I've often quoted this for Jupiter from the Tao Te Ching. The quote goes something like, a good traveler um, is not intent on arrival and has no fixed plans. That's only possible when we carry a quality of openness and sincerity and freedom in ourself, which means we're at peace with our thoughts, with our choices, with our decisions. You know, something meaningful to recognize. I'm, I love going into the woods. And I, I find it so amazing. For the life of me, I mean, I've been living in this place for three years, this, this city. And I still can't navigate these woods. Like once I'm in it, I can't navigate back to this, this, this point where I am right now on purpose. I can't. If I try, if I'm, I'm going to get to this tree... I'll end up somewhere else. The moment I let go, I'll end up somewhere. It might be here, it might be somewhere else, but it's always going to be meaningful. Like today I wander, I, I took a jog and I ended up at the playground by accident. I'm like, oh, I never knew this path would lead to the playground. I've been to the playground like 40 times, so many times with my kids, right? I've even walked through the woods. I mean, I know how to get somewhere if I am very linear, walk straight, make the first, le- you know, it's like I can do it that way. But then when I just enter into this, the woods and the whole complex of the trails here, and I'm just running, I'm just moving, I, I don't know how to, I can't navigate. It's a Jupiter thing. It's not a Mercury thing. There's no map. I lived in, in Olympia, Washington for on and off for 10 years. And the Evergreen Forest, which is my most favorite, one of my most favorite places in the world, I can sort of intentionally get to the water at the end of the trail. But if I'm just walking, um, and I just want to find certain places or, you know, I don't know how to consciously nap. My, the whole time that I lived there, I had the same experience. And I love that. I really love that Jupiter experience. And I, even if I become more familiar with an area, 
I always want there to be a quality of, I don't know where this is going to take me. Um, to feel surprised by it, to feel like, oh, this is such a cool spot. Oh, look, look at where we are. And I think it's possible to maintain that experience of reality, even if we're developing more of that linear understanding of things at the same time. It's a very beautiful and fun and joyful and expansive. It, it brings me back into the truth of this journey. It brings me back into the truth of this very nonlinear spiritual path that we're all on. It's something I really value. That I've, I've, I haven't really articulated that very much, you know, but it's real. It's something that's very real for me. So, okay. Reminder, the Essentials course has begun. However, I'm keeping enrollment open for the first month. Um, the first week was just orientation. And the first three or four weeks are really just uh, learning the basic philosophy, the basic meaning of the archetypes. It's a, a very slow moving process. We actually only begin the practice work into April. So I'm very intentionally keeping enrollment open. If you're feeling to join, you can still do that. Check it out in the link below. Get in touch if you have any questions and thank you for watching.